Hello, this is Mario Salinas. I'm the superintendent, Edinburgh CISD. Welcome to the superintendent's perspective. Today's main topic will be return to school safety protocols. Uh, before we go there, uh, Dr. Garza, we started with staff this week with the teachers. They're back on campus. Uh, things seem to be going well for us as far as the safety protocols, uh, getting ready for the first day of school. Uh, what What is your uh, take as far as um, the teachers uh, getting ready as far as their emphasis on, on safety guidelines? Well, the, the, on, teachers, on uh, the teachers started on Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, the ones on 187 day contract. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard a lot of positive feedback. Mm -hmm. they, they went to their trainings. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they, they were getting their curriculum rollout. Mm -hmm. um, they went to all their meetings. They, they seem to be ready to go. You know, I heard a lot of positive feedback. Uh, and a lot of them felt very safe, the ones that I spoke to. I, I do want to say that there are a lot, there are people in the community, parents and others, that are concerned with the fact that the school district is not offering a virtual option for their children in, in light of the fact that COVID-19 is still around, the Delta variant is spreading. And so they're concerned and what, what I try to explain to the parents that the Texas Education Agency, which is our, they guide, they provide guidelines for us to follow the mandates and guidelines. They have not provided a, an option for, they have, but they have not provided the funding for us to do virtual learning. Uh, so what, what are your, your thoughts on that? Well, I know that, that all the studies show that the best learning takes place in person. And for the last year and a half, the majority of our children have been home learning virtually. And when I say learning, I mean, some of them weren't given it their all because, right. well, it's a different environment for them. Uh, I know that I was glad to see that we're gonna go 100% in person because there's a learning gap that has taken place the last year that really needs to be addressed. And uh, our curriculum team uh, has worked very hard on the curriculum writing this summer to address that learning gap. So the best place for children to learn is at school. There's no, there's no question about it. There were there some uh, regression as far as the learning, uh, not only with the assessments, but just le learning in general. From advanced placement exam, from advanced placement work, coursework to, um, to uh, special needs type instruction to, to uh, the STAR uh, uh, testing, data there's, there's there's regression not only in edinburgh uh in in the county in the valley in the state in the nation probably the world so there was regression there the social emotional aspect of it also there there are students I, I think you know students especially when they're teenagers they're they're i'm not a scientist but they're built to 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 be out with the friends or be to 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 communicate with the, with others so they're not biologically built to to be quarantined all day long. I, I don't think it's good for them. Uh, so yes, I, I'm glad that the students are back on campus. I know that I have two, two children and I'm gonna send them both, both back to school because I think it's, that's what they need for their social, emotional wealth, uh, health uh, and well-being and, and for their academic well-being as well. They're, they're both super important to me as a parent that they prepare themselves for the for for the future for their future and 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 also to, to their social emotional uh growth is a concern for for me as well yeah you're along those lines the, the texas legislature this summer passed a new law mandating for us to to have a social emotional learning component in every mm -hmm. grade level k to 12. Mm -hmm. so so i know that we built that into our curriculum as well where they're going to get a daily weekly dose of social emotional learning and, and it's being head head up by the counseling staff and our uh, 504 coordinators and our school uh, psychologists just, just to help make sure that the well-being of these children is back because you're right they were home they were going through depression they were by themselves they were isolated in their rooms all alone uh, days a whole year at a time and it's not very healthy for them mentally so uh, that's going to be a big part of this year's transition back to school is social emotional learning yes the all research indicate that isolation is not good for for children for teenagers for probably for anybody 
and you know being isolated for a year and a half at home it's just not a good thing the and, and the other piece of, of my thinking when it comes to sending their cho my children all children back to school is that after a year and a half you know we started in march of 2020 quarantining uh covid was brand new to to us and to, to the world we were confronted with this disease and we had to uh, adapt quickly and then we went through the summer of 2020 and then the fall of 2020 school started children was quarantined at home in Edinburgh. everybody was including the teachers they were uh, teaching from home uh asynchronous uh and, and virtual and synchronous and then we came come spring of of 21 uh, some students started to come back. Actually, in the fall of, of 20, some of the students started to come back, but more students started to come back in the in the spring. And uh, the, the disease was uh, waning, and we were adapting our policies for the spread of the disease. You recall that. Yeah. Now, after all of that, we've been in the, you and I have been in the middle of it. We've been in the front lines of fighting COVID and keeping our, our community, our school community safe. I feel being through it through a year and a half if if with our safety protocols the top three vaccines for our staff mm -hmm. work and that's by the staff by by literature on on the centers for disease control that that not me that's cdc the vaccines work the they keep you safe and if you get the disease in a breakthrough case the chances of you getting seriously ill are, are small if you're vaccine, vaccinated now we vaccinated our staff most of our staff over 95 percent of our staff is vaccinated we vaccinated our high school students those that wanted to get vaccinated i'm not sure what the percentages are would you say about 50 percent more or less I'd say at least half. At least half of our students. Half of our students. We vaccinated our middle schoolers, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, also, uh, uh, would you say about 50% or more, more or less? Uh, they're coming out. I'd yeah, say they're, they're beginning, right? 50. We've been vaccinated. We've been back at the middle schools this right. last week, and we're going to finish we're, up next week. And I want to tell the community out there, we're still vaccinated. If you want to get vaccinated, call any one of our schools. Call, talk to the nurse. We will coordinate an appointment to, to vaccinate the parents to vaccinate the, the children if they're eligible 12 and up or anybody out there in the community call any one of our schools and we'll coordinate we are vaccine providers uh, for for vaccines so we vaccinate the other piece of our strategy the second part of our, of our we have a many part but the second part of the strategy that, I, that we know works are our masks yes. wearing masks work uh, i know that in in uh, may of uh, 21, Governor Abbott issued a, issued an executive order that beginning, I believe, the first week of June, yeah, June uh, man, the masks were no longer going to be mandated in public facilities. I'm sorry, uh, government facilities. Yes. So we were recommending masks, but now that school is restarting, we feel that masks has to be part of our strategy in slowing down COVID, especially when you, when we don't want COVID. We don't want our children that come to our schools being exposed to COVID. So beginning yesterday, August to 12, Edinburgh School District has mandated masks for yes. all who enter our facilities. The school board felt it important enough to them to have an emergency board meeting and draft a board resolution to require masks for all of our students, staff, and visitors. So you're absolutely correct. Uh, starting yesterday, masks were mandated. I got a call from Principal McAuliffe because yesterday they were doing meet the Cougars outside in their stadium and he was going to have masks available and if you brought a mask good, if you didn't, he's got a I'm one to, to give out. Mm -hmm. So he was ready to go. We said, we're going to start enforcing it right away. And uh, they seem to have done well. You know, we didn't have any major issues. Uh, some of the people said they felt safe. Also yesterday, Edinburgh CISD along with many other school districts uh, sued Governor Abbott uh, in an effort to mandate masks on our facilities. So that's happening uh, with us right now. Uh, 
So we think fa face mask work. Social distancing works. Mm -hmm. As you know, you 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 were very involved in the social. Actually, you were very involved with the, the entire aspect of keeping our fa facility safe as a as a COVID director. I served as a COVID director from yeah. February to uh, June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did five months of that, mm -hmm. working alongside the health services department and working on all the rules and the vaccine and, and the, the different mitigation efforts that we were doing to, to help uh, uh, keep the spread of the disease down. And, uh, and at a minimum. At a minimum, and, and we did a good job of it. I know that. Can, can you describe to our parents what kind of, what can they expect, what can the children expect when they go to, to school, either elementary, middle, and high? Yes, and so we, we put together some safety guidelines that, that are going to go out in the newspaper this weekend uh, that, that you have approved, sir. Mm -hmm. and, and the guidelines are along, they're the same lines of our back to school plan that we've already put out. It's on our website, on our main ECISD, uh, www.ecisd.us. Just go down to the middle and it'll say return to the school safe plan. And uh, click on that. It's about a 13 page document. And uh, it's got all the plans, but it's 13 pages. But this weekend, we have one pager that's got our safety guidelines. And uh, we'll be passing that out. We're gonna share it out on, on our social media. But it's got all, all of it, all the guidelines. And then we can go through some of those right now, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, the first guideline says uh, all ECISD staff, students, parents, and all visitors at ECISD facilities are required to wear protective face masks. And we qualify that as per ECISD board resolution adopted on August the 12th, okay. 2021. So that, that's our, really our main change that we have right now. All the other things we have been doing, but we'll review them as well. Yes. But, but that's the main one is that we are gonna require face masks moving forward. Uh, we've got schools will provide masks upon request. I mentioned Principal McAuliffe, he was gonna have a box of masks, uh, several boxes mm -hmm. for students and, and sure. people that didn't have. Uh, we're gonna conduct daily temperature checks of all students, staff, and visitors. Uh, we're not doing the wristbands anymore, but we are making sure they're not running the temperature because that's one of the symptoms of, of COVID-19. Uh, the custodians are going to disinfect the classrooms daily, and, and that's been happening, but we just want the parents to know that, that this is a daily thing. And, and this, you know, we talk about how, you know, they're scared. Some people are scared to send their children to school, but our schools are probably some of the safest, most sanitized places we know. Well, we've compared this before to going to the supermarket. When you pick up things at the supermarket and you put them back, nobody wipes or cleans after them. They're still there. You're, you're mixing and matching with everybody that's there. But in our schools, when the student leaves and another one comes in, we wipe the right. desk down and, and we, we're constantly sanitizing over and over and over and over. So I, I personally feel that the schools are safe. My children go to school. And when I'm, I take them to school, I remind them in the morning, wear your mask, always. Uh, when you're at lunch, eat by yourself or with your Carol, and you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be safe. And and my my uh, children, my older one, went back to school when the teachers went back to school last spring on March one. I remember the day, March, March yeah. one, March first. I the, our teacher started back on campus, and my child started with him. And I feel completely safe. Uh, and now that he's vaccinated, I'm even more confident. As far as my own, my own children. And I, my son went back. He was a senior at Vela, mm -hmm. and he went back on March 1st mm -hmm. as well. I didn't have any issues. Mm -hmm. he, he was safe. You know, he, he we got him vaccinated as soon as he uh, turned 18, and so you know we feel pretty good about it. And he wore his mask. And yes, he sir. had sanitizer in his backpack. And he did okay. So we. we, we do, feel, you know, on the mask mandates. In Edinburgh and probably the whole valley, most people wear masks. As in my experience in, 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 in visiting schools and for schools mostly, you walk into the schools, I'm talking during summer school, no mask mandates. Most people wear masks. I would say 100% of our staff were wearing a mask. 100% of our students were wearing a mask when I was visiting campuses during the summer. Same here. I, I, the campuses I went to, 90, 99% of the students were wearing masks out there. Uh, even when the board passes resolution, and I stepped out of the boardroom, we had a lot of staff here, on, on, uh, here at Central Administration. They were wearing masks. Most people were masks. And they were doing it because of what they see in the news, mm -hmm. that, that the COVID numbers are on the rise. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you that the hospitalization rates for COVID have been rising. 
Yeah. And our staff is very good about watching the news and implementing their own personal responsibility of wearing a mask without us mandating it. When we mandated it, they were like, yeah, thank you. Because the people that I've been sitting with, a few of them aren't wearing a mask, but the majority are, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You wanna continue with your protocol, sir? Yeah, so uh, this in fact, uh, teachers and students will practice social distancing, three foot rule whenever possible. And it used to be six feet. Mm -hmm. Originally, they said six foot rule. And we had very few students in school, we could do it. But the TEA changed that guidance to a three foot rule whenever possible, because they know you can't put 100% of students mm -hmm. back in school with six foot rule. Yeah. So they, they dropped it to three foot, mm -hmm. and we're trying to stick to three foot, mm -hmm. foot rule as, as much as we can. Uh, encourage frequent hand washing with soap and water, and, and that's always been the best way to, to avoid passing along uh, any kind of infection. Hand sanitizer stations in every classroom and throughout the building. So they have those, those big gallon pumps of sanitizer, the big industrial ones, and they're throughout the school. Some have it in the front office and in the hallway. Uh, when you enter the room, uh, all the teachers have some. And if they don't have any, they can order more. Uh, and maintenance and, and operations, we, we have a warehouse where we, that's all we're doing is having them distributed to where they need it. So, so principals out there, teachers, tell your principal, I'll put in a work order, we'll, we'll get you sanitizer and whatever uh, COVID supplies you need to, to continue to keep the children safe. Um, the next one here is uh, bus drivers will disinfect the bus between each route. So, so they have some spray that they use yeah. uh, in between when, after they drop off the children and they're gonna go get another route, they spray it down real quick and then they go get the next group of kids. Uh, student desk shields will be provided to each campus. So the campus still has their old desk shields and we have some new desk shields in order. Like Carol, you know, the students get the Carol. They look kind of like they this. They clear through, they, they can see the teacher, and they can have their breakfast and... That's not... Yeah any requirement it's, right. it's just our own mitigation efforts we spent a lot of money on that mm -hmm. just to you know to avoid it's like a sneeze guard if i sneeze or you know yep. we protect the others for, from germs so we we have those in order and and those we're going to begin a fresh set out there pretty soon we ask our, our campuses to use the old ones for now but the new ones are on the way so correct we'll, we'll get them out as soon as we get them um charge free water fountains in every school so in the past, all the students drink out of the same water fountain, outside, inside, all that. So we had to do away with that just because, you know, some students touch their mouth to the faucet, whatever, where the water comes out. So we've capped all of those. You, you can't drink water fountain the old fashioned way anymore, the way you and I did when we were in school. Uh, but they, they have a little uh, laser sensor that you put your cup against it and it pours water into a cup. How about when students, at, I'm talking secondary now, that they have to be in the hallway. How do they, uh, how are we gonna operate there when they're between, between classes? So one of the things that the, the high schools, the middle schools in particular, because they have more students, came up with uh, last year is, is directional traffic flow. Right. And, and they have some arrows and signs that, yeah. that you have to walk on the right side. Yeah. And uh, this hallway is only one way, mm -hmm. that hallway is the other way. Mm -hmm just to avoid the big bottleneck congestion. I know uh, some of the schools have a real problem where the hallways are real narrow. Mm. And before when there was any traffic flow directions, mm. it was just a big body, yes. you know, 100 bodies of children, hundreds of bodies in between passing periods. But they did implement traffic flow direction in the hallway. So that helps a lot in the passing periods because they're all on one side of the hall now. Yeah. And this hallway is only one way to, you know, to avoid all that traffic congestion in between class. The other thing we have is uh, students who develop COVID-19 symptoms will be sent to an isolation room. And th this started last year yes. uh, until the parent can pick them up. So, so if we find a student that is sick and he's got symptoms of COVID-19, uh, we, we escort them, we have somebody escort them to the isolation room. They call the parent and they need to go get that child checked with their family physician. So that's one of the protocols we have, and, and that's swift. That happens in the morning now. They find a child that's sick. Uh, also, the, the, the governor recently passed out a new executive order saying we don't have to notify 
parents if the child is sick in the school or the classroom. But we're not going to... You mean the children, in the, if there's a child in the classroom, COVID positive, you test COVID positive, the governor said you don't have to contact trace, you don't have to notify anybody. So we're not going there, are we? No, we're not. We're going to continue to contact trace and find out who the close contacts were, and we're going to notify those close contacts. The parents, I don't know, your child no. was a close contact, either you need to get them tested or you need to check them for symptoms, depending if they're vaccinated or not. And, and the nurse at the school will, will be the one telling them the protocol through our health services uh, director. Yeah. But, yeah, we are going to continue contacting. Uh, we, we have nurses parents. on all campuses. You, we have, right? Yeah, all of, our, all of our school. One of our big safety uh, features that we have at Edinburgh CISD is that we have a registered nurse at all of our 43 yes. campuses, and the high schools have two registered nurses. Yes. So we're one of the only districts that has, you know, fully degreed RNs. Certified, fully certified RNs. Yeah, we're really proud of that. And, and parents at home, you know, should feel good that, that there is an RN at school because some don't have that. So, yeah. so they don't true. have full-fledged RNs. They don't have, uh, they don't have RNs. They don't have police officers, armed officers on every campus. We have them both. So we, we, we have many things that other school districts don't. Yes, sir. Uh, many things. Now, no. as far as contact tracing, we are going to contact the parents? Yeah, we're going to continue contacting the parents of children that were close contact. So, so if a child gets sick uh, at the elementary level in the classroom, we're going to let that classroom What are the quarantine rules? Um, the quarantine rules vary whether the child is vaccinated mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. But I know that in order for, if they're vaccinated, they just need to monitor them mm -hmm. for, for, symptoms. for symptoms. And if they don't have any, they're not considered a close right. contact if they're vaccinated. That's for 12 and up. Uh, if they do have symptoms, then they have to go get a PCR test, which is a little bit more intrusive uh, COVID test. Uh, they have to bring back a negative PCR result. And that takes two, three days. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can come back after that. The, the, uh, we were COVID testing uh, quite a bit that last year we we had we we had covid test kits thousands of them are we gonna employ that strategy again this year to to try to slow down mitigate the, the spread of covid we are still covid testing uh we, we made it optional you know i feel it should be required but you know you know there's always one or two out there uh it's optional, but we are going to continue to offer COVID testing at all the schools. We, are we going to have a program like COVID test uh, every athletic team before the season or, or, or to try out for the team or, or maybe once a week uh, COVID test the football team or the volleyball team? Are we going to have any of that in place? Yeah, all of the athletic teams have to COVID test before they start the season, training. okay, the season, the training. I know football just started. Right, they all the, all, all the all football players COVID were tested. were COVID tested. Yes, sir. and the volleyball players. I know volleyball and football are the big ones in the fall. Yes, and and actually we we just and again things are always changing. So because the COVID rates were really low at the beginning of the summer, our new rule was we're COVID tested at the beginning of the season, and then as needed after that, if you have symptoms or if you're a close contact someone. But since the rates, the hospitalization rates have really gone up a lot lately, mm -hmm. we're going to start COVID testing them every two weeks. Uh, we're back to that. I do want to say that on the hospital rates and the hospital, uh, stu the people in the hospitals and seriously ill are 99% are not vaccinated. Yes. That, that according to the CDC, according to local hospital officials, uh, most people that are in the hospital seriously ill have not received the vaccine and they're and they're getting sick and those yeah. those are statistics that are coming out of the Hidalgo County Health right. Department right. and I know that, that I've taken some calls and there's some some people don't want to believe that and they're like you don't know how do you know and I told I read yes this from the Hidalgo County Health Department right and they refuse to believe it yeah and and you know we, we can only do so much <laughs> And, and then it's up to personal responsibility. They, everyone can do whatever they want. Yeah. But, but 
You know, we don't just make up numbers. I saw 24% yesterday, Hidalgo County hospitalization rate, COVID-19 in the hospitals. So Man, most of them unvaccinated. And most of them unvaccinated. Yeah, so we know vaccine work. So uh, vaccine keep you safe. I know we're going to continue to vaccinate everyone 12 and over that wants it. Just call us, 289-2300, help health services, and we'll, we'll get you scheduled. And as soon as it's available for the then younger it's free. ones. And it's free, right? It's free. It's free for everybody. So. I, was, I was listening to a... I was listening to, to, to Dr. Melendez, actually, earlier in the week. He was saying that when the... Pfizer or Moderna gets full approval for for the use of the vaccines uh, about COVID vaccines that it will be sh and that, and they expect it any day now to get full approval yeah. for full approval for the use of, of of the of the Moderna and the Pfizer yes meaning that they're safe according to the Food and Food Drug Administration mm -hmm. shortly after that. They're gonna. They're going to open it up for the younger ones, yes. the, up to. I'm not sure how young. Maybe five, according to the doctor. I, th I think he said five or six, Doctor Melendez. I think I heard five to eleven. All right, and, and, and at that point, I believe that's when we're gonna start. When we see the full approval of the of the COVID vaccines, that's when we're gonna start a, uh, to see a decline again. Got willing, right? And we're gonna start inoculating our, our little ones. They want it right away. So to give another layer of security for for the small ones. We have a lot of parents calling in, and they're saying, "Hey, we're ready for our little guy. We're ready to bring him in and get him a shot." You know? I have a small one, and, and when they're when they uh, make him eligible, I'm gonna get in line right away because I want my little one to get yeah. vaccinated. He's the last one in our family that's not vaccinated, and I can hardly wait. To vaccinate my son yeah. uh, we can finish up sir with uh, what we expect from the parents we we do need the parents help uh, to help us maintain a safe environment at the schools and parents you should screen your child daily for COVID-19 symptoms uh, we're talking about fever chills cough uh, sore throat runny nose headaches uh, if your child is sick don't send them to school in the past, we could send him to school. If he has a headache, you know, here's some time, I'll go to school. Sore throat, here's some, you know, whatever, give him some medicine, go to school. But you can't do that today. No. If they're feeling sick, you gotta keep him at home and, and take him to your physician, you know, more than ever. Back in, before the pandemic. Pre-pandemic, pre we, we had contests to keep children in school, you know, because of the funding and so on and so on. Right, we were doing attendance contest. We've attendance asked the principals, contest, hey, back off from the attendance contest. Incentives and things like that, and the principals would do all they can to give all their children on campus. Yeah. But that those, those strategies uh, those, are on hold for those now. Those days are gone for a while until the pandemic yes. is over. Uh, there's not going to be any more perfect attendance field trips and all those things no, we were doing. No, uh, Keep them home, and uh, we'll catch them up when they get back. Okay, uh, Dr. Garza, thank you very much for the information. We'll get it out to the community so they see what we're doing and, and can they call you if they have questions as here at, at Central Administration, yeah. Dr. Garza? They can call uh, Assistant right. Superintendent for Support Services, Anthony Garza, and I'll be happy to have a conversation with them and uh, help them with their questions. That is the last we have for, for this episode of the Superintendent's Perspective. Uh, on behalf of, of uh, our school district, uh, uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.